feel like as a young person I have a voice when I'm talking to people that are the same age as me. Older people don't really give young people a chance because we don't have life experience or whatever they like to call it. On a political scale, you're not going to really have much of a voice because you're just this teenager who goes to a TAFE. I feel like I'm more heard if I'm talking about something that I know well because no one's going to really listen to you if you don't know all the facts. I don't believe I have a voice. I believe this because um, we're still deciding on what we want in life. I feel like I've been heard when I want a conversation that I'm actually passionate about because it doesn't really matter if you want to hear me or not, you will. So if I were to walk into a local council actually on a topic that I'm interested in, whether it be gay rights, gun rights, whatever you want, and be heard, I think it'd be absolutely fantastic. The challenge for me getting heard is just finding the best place to actually say something. Because you get all these people on like social media, like Facebook, going on these massive rants and the status of blah, 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 and they might have some really good points, but no one's gonna see it. Like, you know, the friends are gonna see it, they're gonna, oh, that's awesome. And then like the next bit, they'll, they'll forget what they've said, they'll forget that's ever even happened. In a society where everything's meant to be equal, you get so many things that aren't equal, that are really obvious, but everyone just skips over and hides, such as, you know, you got your marriage equality. People want to get married, they can't because they're gay. Something we all thought, that why not? Why isn't it legal? It's just something that doesn't really make sense to not legalise. It's not going to affect anyone who doesn't believe in it, only the people who do. The very first thing we did was going to the marriage equality rally and we interviewed different people there that you know, we thought you know, looked really fun to interview and um, uh, interviewed Ellie Hodge, which is kind of the face of Melbourne's um, equal rights, so um, she had a lot to offer for us. Some of the things we learned about marriage equality when we're trying to tackle it is that it's a very, very big global issue that as much as you can try and have a, a say on it, it really kind of, the voice dies in the crowd that are for or against it. We've uh, talked to a, um, a person from Safe Schools Coalition, Joel, um, about Safe Schools, which is more of a local issue tackling uh, homophobia and transphobia within schools. I think we changed our goal from marriage equality down to safe schools because it was kind of an easier target and there's more that we could do on a local level rather than global. If you get people who are uh, homosexual or transgender in schools accepted, you start getting generations as they come through the education system, they accept this idea of yes, everyone is normal like that. So that can lead on to when they're older, they're thinking about marriage, they go, right, well, I don't care if a, a guy and a guy get married. That's cool, because in school, there was gay people walk around all the time and I didn't give a crap. One of the things our group did was um, get the other VCAL class to complete a survey on what their views are. When we got the results from the surveys, we saw that a lot of the students um, supported it. As part of joining Safe Schools, we've put up all these posters to get all our message and our point across to everyone who looks at them and sees them in the hallways. And we've met with our, um, our centre manager, Chris, about persuading him to sign up to the Safe Schools, which we successfully did, and he's in the process of uh, signing it up all formally with the rest of the school body. We felt good because he was actually listening to us. Like, he took the time out of his day to sit down and listen to us. Oh, it's surprising, like, how easy it is to make a, like, a change, like, signing up to Safe Schools. And so getting hurt as a young person, it's hard to do, but when it happens, a lot of good things can come out of it and you feel really good about yourself. I kind of overcame, you know, my, I'm always kind of shy. I don't like talking to people I don't know. So we kind of swapped roles a bit and Bryce did more of the interviewing because he's, yeah, not very shy. <laughs> a challenge of group work is really distributing the work evenly. I think next time we would start with a local issue instead of starting with something so big. I think best advice would just be to stay open-minded about what responses you get back from people that you might be interviewing because that will help you to better come up with new ideas for your topic or what you can do about it. If we could do something 
things different, it would probably be seeing more of each other in our own time. This project can help because if you get your voice out there and heard, it really just clicks in mind of, hey, even though I'm doing VCAL, I can still be heard, I can still make a difference, I can still do things in life, and people are not going to look at me as a dumbass. I think the best part of this project was just being able to do something, even if it is as small as just in the school, and to actually be heard by someone.